Cats and their humans have a special relationship unlike any other, but sometimes that relationship can take a little while to get off the ground. Maybe you just adopted a playful new kitten or skittish rescue cat and are struggling to build that bond. Or maybe you and your kitty have been together for a while, but you're just not feeling that connection yet. It doesn't mean that you're a bad cat owner or that your feline friend is a bad cat. It just means that the two of you are still early in your pet parent relationship. In this video, we're going to look at the three best ways to show your little fuzzball some love and get them to love you back. But before we dive in, why not subscribe to our channel and join our feline loving community for more videos on how to show love to your cat. Number one, body language. While humans communicate primarily through sound, cats communicate through scent and motion. Our noses aren't sensitive enough to pick up on what our furry friends are trying to tell us through scent, but we can study their body language to get some idea of what they are thinking and feeling. One of the major causes of cats not warming up to their humans is a lack of communication. If you don't know how to read your cat, you can never tell when something you're doing is stressing them out or learn which activities they particularly enjoy. The easiest way to check your cat's mood is to look at their tail. In general, the higher a cat's tail, the happier they are. A cat with a tail stuck up like a signpost is trying to tell you that they are happy to be alive. A cat with a tail hanging straight out behind them is content and feeling fine, while a cat whose tail is very low or tucked under their body is scared or stressed. If you see your cat wagging their tail, you might be under the impression that your kitty is happy. Big mistake. A waggy tail may mean happiness when it's attached to a dog, but for a cat, it can indicate anything from frustration to anxiety to anger, depending on how fast and hard the tail is moving. If your cat's tail is lashing from side to side or fluffed up like a feather duster and they have their ears pinned back and are growling or hissing, this is not the time for pets. When your cat is in this kind of bad mood, the safest thing for the both of you is to back away and give your kitty time to calm down. If you are petting a calm seeming cat, however, and their tail starts twitching or gently flicking, then that is their way of telling you to back off. They're not mad at you yet, but they're about ready to tell you that petting time is over. A cat who is happy and engaged with being petted, on the other hand, will show it by leaning into your touch or moving their body to direct your hand to the perfect place for a good scratch. They may also try to pet you by rubbing their heads against you or licking your skin. If your kitty is really contented, they will show it by purring. By paying attention to your cat's body language, you can ensure that you aren't accidentally pushing any boundaries and stressing them out. Your relationship will improve leaps and bounds once you learn the basics of kitty communication. Number two, hanging out. It may seem weird to phrase it that way, but just like when you're trying to make a human friend, the true key to building a relationship with your kitty is simply to hang out together. Try starting regular play sessions when you get home from work. You can buy fancy fishing rods, laser pointers, shiny balls, and remote control mice at most pet stores, or make your own DIY toys out of dangling bits of string, scrunched up paper balls, or even rolled up old socks. Cuddle time is also a good way to build a bond with your cat. Don't pick up your cat if they're not fully comfortable with you yet. They might end up curled up on your lap, but they won't stay there. Instead, help reassure an anxious cat by getting down on their level. Sit or crouch down on the ground, a few feet away, and try tapping gently on the ground and making soft, kissing noises to coax them over. If they come close, slowly reach out your hand for them to sniff. If they start to back away at this point, withdraw and shuffle backwards. If they come closer, start by stroking them gently and slowly from the top of their head to the length of their spine, being sure to go with the fur instead of against it. Then move on to scratching the base of the ears and under the chin and stroking the base of the tail. Another important part of social time with your kitty is not pushing them away when they try to initiate it. Cats often engage in a behavior called mirroring, 
This is where they mimic the behavior of people or animals they see as members of their social group. For example, when the humans all sit down to watch TV, your kitty may come and watch as well. Occasionally, this can be disruptive, such as when the humans are trying to work and the cat keeps walking across the computer keyboard. But it's important to understand that your kitty just wants to hang out. Some people have found success in giving their cats their own toy laptops to play with. Some Muslim cat parents even have gone viral after getting their kitties their own little prayer mats to keep them from becoming a nuisance when they try to join in with daily prayers. Number 3. Don't force it. Perhaps the most important advice at all when building a relationship with your cat is don't try to force it. Cats are often skittish, introverted and big fans of personal autonomy. You ever notice how whenever you have friends over, your pets will often ignore the cat lovers in favor of the one person in the room who has allergies? When it comes to cats, the best way to communicate that you want to be friends is to act the exact opposite of how you would act with a human you wanted to befriend. Humans are big. If you move towards your kitty too fast, even if they know you would never hurt them on purpose, they may end up running away or hiding just to avoid getting trodden on or tripped over by accident. If you keep your distance and act uninterested, however, your cat will interpret it as you telling them you are not a threat. Cats are busy. If you try to initiate cuddle time while they're in the middle of some important feline business, such as sleeping, then they won't be amused especially if you scoop them up and lift them off the ground without warning. If you wait for them come to you, they will be much more likely to engage. Cats are also very anti-change. If your cat is new to your household, and especially if they're an older kitty who came from an established home, then they'll probably take a while to warm up to you, no matter how nice and friendly you are. Stray and rescue cats, meanwhile, may have had traumatic experiences with humans in their former lives, or may not have gone through the proper socialization process as kittens, which can make it harder for them to trust and become comfortable with humans. Finally, some cats just aren't very openly affectionate. Certain breeds are less cuddly than others, and this can vary even more between individuals. Where one cat may show affection by jumping into your arms and purring at the top of their lungs, another may let you know they love you simply by sitting next to you on the couch and graciously allowing you to pet them once in a while. Ultimately, the important thing to remember is to let your kitty take the lead. If a bond is going to form between the two of you, then it's going to happen on their terms and in their own time. You can't force a cat to love you. But if you take the time and patience to earn their affections, then your bond will be all the more meaningful because of it. If you're looking for more ways to show love and affection to your feline friend, why not check out this video on things that your cat actually wants from you, that many cat owners don't think to provide.